Motorland Aragon in Spain. It's round seven of the FIM CV Repsol. We are live across the world. It's great to have you company. My name is Tom Brooks. Alongside me for today is Dakota Mamola. Dakota, great to have you back in the commentary box. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Uh, for what is set to be one of the most exciting rounds of the championship. Yeah, it's definitely great to come back here in Motorland Aragon. Great place, great facility. Awesome, uh, awesome place to be. Great for racing. You know, they got motocross track, they got go karts, they got everything here. And uh, being here two weeks ago with MotoGP uh, and back here again is uh, is a great feeling. So certainly is. Yeah, we're very much looking forward to the race and getting on today. Slightly different schedule to what we had uh, last time out in Jerez. However, we'll guide you through that in just a few moments' time. But what we should mention before we kick off any racing proceedings today is that there are three championships that could be decided by 4pm this afternoon. First up, we've got the Moto2 European Championship. As you can see, 16 laps at this 5km long circuit, 7 left-hand turns and 10 right-hand corners. It's a beautiful circuit, it's full of undulations, it's full of dips, fast corners, technical corners and a long back straight as well. You can see there, 968 metres before the final corner, so just under a kilometre long and we're very much looking forward to seeing what the slipstream effect is going to be throughout the course of day. So as we mentioned, the first race up is Moto2, but as I was talking about just a couple of moments ago, we've got three championships that be, can be decided. In terms of the Moto2 European Championship, it's uh, currently um, Eric Granado with the advantage. He has a 20-point lead over Ricky Cardus in the championship. He has to win both races today in order to take the title. In terms of Moto3, that looks pretty much uh, a bit closer because Dennis Foggia uh, has a 60-point advantage over his nearest rivals, and all he has to do to take the title today is finish on the podium. And in terms of European Talent Cup, it's exactly the same story as the Moto2 European Championship uh, with uh, regards to Manuel Gonzalez, who is leading the way at the moment. He has to win both races today in order to take the title before the final round in Valencia. So a very exciting day. We're looking forward to getting the racing underway. Two races for Moto2 today, two races for European Talent Cup, and just one sole race for the uh, Moto3 Junior World Championship. As you can see, riders lining up on the grid, getting ready to uh, get the race underway. Teams are all there and uh, prepared. Looking like it's going to be a good day. Yeah, definitely. And uh, like you said, Dennis Foggia has been doing incredible. Uh, doing a wild card here two weeks ago will help him a lot for this weekend. Uh, qualifying fifth in the World Championship uh, with a I think he went six tenths slower than, than what he did today, uh, yesterday for qualifying, which is impressive. So the lap time he did yesterday with a 58-1 would have put him, I think, second uh, on the grid in the World Championship. So impressive. So, certainly was very impressive. As we said, Moto2 up first. We've got uh, Eric Granado leading the way in the championship. We've got Ricky Cardu who's right on his coattails. And this is going to be one hell of a battle. And I'm fairly sure it's going to go down to the final round in Valencia. But never count your chickens, because Granado has looked quick. He's not on pole position. Two points apart and misses one race. Uh, no doubt he's, uh, he's going to be, be there. And uh, wonder what he's, or what plans he has for next year, too. Uh, I think everything's going to be decided with these next two rounds in the, of the CV. Well, there's no doubt, of course, he would like to move back, I'm sure, to the World Championship full-time. He's been uh, replacing, he replaced Brad Brinder on the KTM earlier this year. Looks like those seats are going to be filled up. But and I think he's a KTM uh, uh, test rider. He is the KTM test is rider, he? yeah. Is he? So, so uh, that's always helpful. Uh, so he's always on a, on a Moto2 bike, so um, he's, he's used to it. Yeah, he's had a good amount of experience, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, Ricky Cardus. The man who lines up alongside him, we'll see him in just a couple of moments' time, though. Eric Granado, he, of course, has previous World Championship experience, having raced uh, in the World Championship back in 2012 in Moto2, just 16 years of age he was when he made his debut, and then uh, moved back to Moto3 for a couple of years. Here he is, just getting ready to come onto the grid now, and he's his nearest uh, title rival. Those two separated by just over two-tenths of a second in qualifying, so not the biggest gap that we've seen, but still Still a good vantage that Cardu's had in qualifying yesterday, but that of course was turned on its head in warm-up this morning. So what do we reckon? Do we think that was just track conditions or do we think just perhaps uh, clean laps or something? Well, by the looks of it, it seems like uh, the especially the top two with Ricky and Eric, they went quicker in session one, which is probably the morning you know, qualifying, which is a bit cooler, which always helps. But then again, you look at the World Championship boys and they do their fastest lap time at 2 p.m. in the middle of the daytime, super hot, and it was a lot hotter weeks ago than, than what it is now. So I think it really depends riding style setup and, and, and everything. So, but then again, two tenths in qualifying, you know, maybe just a better lap time, but 
what's important here is uh, to have a good rhythm, uh, not make mistakes, especially a lot of mistakes are made in turn one, uh, breaking in too deep and going wide, and uh, also after the corkscrew, I think it's like turn nine or something, a lot of them go straight there too. Exactly. So Eric Granado, his third front row start. His first front row start, though, is this man, Joe Roberts, 20 years of age, uh, racing for the AGR team, who he's been competing in the World Championship with up until uh, the last round at Aragon. It was his last event for the team as they decided to uh, withdraw their efforts from the World Championship to primarily focus on CV. And looks like they're re uh, reaping more rewards here at Aragon. Uh, third position, first front row start for Joe. Uh, he's been very quick. He's had podiums throughout the course of the season. And uh, surely it's only a matter of time before he's on the top step. Yeah, I mean, he's there, and uh, I think signing uh, with NTS for next year in the World Championship gave him a bit more confidence uh, on the track uh, and self-esteem, and uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's always been a good rider, even in the U.S. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a tough, tough, but a good learning experience for him in the World Championship. Doing already some, you know, races there in the wild cards, and that I think helped him too as a rider, and to get to know a bit more the, the Moto2 bike. Exactly. We just saw Lukas Tulovic. He starts on the head of the second row in fourth position. Keep an eye out for the 17-year-old. This man, though, lines up alongside him. Like with Joe Roberts, he'll be riding for NTS in the Moto2 World Championship next year as part of a collaboration with RW Racing. 24 years of age, reigning Moto2 European champion Stephen Odendahl. He's uh, mathematically, unfortunately, out of uh, contention for this season. Uh, but regardless, he's looking uh, like he's surely going to be on the top step of the podium before the end of the year. But of course, there are only three races to go before the end of the year so anything can happen but he lines up in the middle of the second row with uh, this man alongside him Hector Garzo for the Team Wimu CMS outfit on the Mistral chassis 19 years old he is of course uh, has ridden in the world championship this year at the uh, Saxon ring and as you can see on the graphic on the right hand side of your screen uh, fourth in the championship speaking of uh, Mistral chassis and uh, experience in the world championship we're going to bring in uh, Remy Gardner in just a few moments time and uh, we're going to talk to him about uh, what it's like to ride here at Aragon in the uh, championship. Yeah, it's great to have him here. And uh, funny enough, me and him were here yesterday riding motocross in the, uh, at the motocross track over here in uh, Motorland. So, uh, yeah, Remy's actually just signed another year with uh, Tech3, which is great. You know, congrats on him. And uh, he's been doing, a, you know, a good season for his first year in the World Championship on a... On a Mistral bike and uh, I think he just needs a bit more time and uh, yeah it's great to have him here thanks to him you know we get to hear a little bit of uh, on his thoughts uh, about riding here two weeks ago and actually testing on the Monday after so it'd be good to, to hear from him. Exactly yeah I'll tell you what we'll do then is uh, we'll take the headset off you Dakota we'll pass it over to Remy just before this uh, race gets started and we'll uh, we'll have a chat and uh, find out exactly. Uh, it's such a long lap it's really easy to make uh, mistakes and a small mistake here and there can cost you a lot on your lap times so uh but then again you know the lap times of these boys and even in moto 2 are pretty fast you know for the top five five riders uh ricky's lap time you know 53.9 would have put him uh, i think seventh with uh thomas luti on the moto gp grid and um and the same with eric granado you know he would have been a top 10 contender so lap times are good it is a bit cooler than what it was here two weeks ago which could always help in, in qualifying uh, for a better lap time, but no doubt about it, they're, they're riding really well. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, Eric's got anything um, to give uh, to uh, Ricky, because Ricky does tend to, to uh, take off in the first few laps of each race. So. Indeed, yeah. I should just uh, point out, I've had uh, notice from the uh, entry of pit lane that we had uh, Cedric Tonkley, who is a uh, wild card for this weekend, on the Aaron chassis. Uh, which is something we haven't seen in the Moto2 European Championship. Looks like he's got a technical problem with his bike. Uh, we'll keep you updated with that. But here's the man that starts from pole position, 29 years of age. As you can see, 140 points in the championship. Look at his track record. Aside from that blot on his copybook in Estoril, where he crashed on the final lap, and yet still finished 11th, he has been on the podium every single time he has competed. And let's not forget there, Dakota, he missed the first round in Albacete as well. Yeah, that's what I was talking to you about, which is impressive. You know, 20 points apart and misses one race, uh, no doubt he's, uh, he's going to be be there. And I uh, wonder what he's, or what plans he has for next year, too. Uh, I think everything's going to be decided with these next two rounds in the, of the CEV. Well, there's no doubt, of course, he would like to move back, I'm sure, to the World Championship full-time. He's been uh, replacing, he replaced Brad Brinder on the KTM earlier this year. Looks like those seats are going to be filled up. But and I think he's a KTM uh, 
uh, test rider. He is the KTM test is rider. He, yeah, is he? So, so uh, that's always helpful. Um, he's, he's used to it. Yeah, he's had a good amount of experience, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, Ricky Cardus. The man who lines up alongside him, we'll see him in just a couple of moments' time. So Eric Granado, he of course has previous World Championship experience, having raced uh, in the World Championship back in 2012 in Moto2, just 16 years of age he was when he made his debut, then uh, moved back to Moto3 for a couple of years. Here he is, just getting ready to come onto the grid now, and he's his nearest uh, title rival. Those two separate... Great track, and uh, yeah, it looks like the conditions are good today, and um, yeah, should be a good race. Yeah, not as warm as, of course, as we've seen uh, a few weeks ago. It looks like it was pretty scorching then. And yeah. Also yeah. did it with the fog as well, right? Yeah, last well, yeah, <laughs> Sunday morning, that was a bit crazy. Um, yeah, we had all our sessions delayed uh, because, yeah, just foggy and we couldn't go out. But, yeah, qualifying was quite, was quite hot. Um, yeah, I'd say probably more hot last, well, two weeks ago. Uh, a bit more greasy on the tyres and definitely harder to do a lap time, but still props to these guys for their for their fast laps because yeah, it's pretty impressive, to be honest. Yeah, and you were saying, of course, you were testing on the Monday here at Aragon as well. What were conditions like then? What, what did, did you try anything new on your bike for the rest of the year? Or um, Conditions were a bit windy, uh, a little bit cooler, but quite windy. Um, but, yeah, we, we tried a lot of things in the bike, but, you know, we still kind of came back to our base setting. Um, but yeah, we're trying to improve our base setting a little bit, but you know, step by step. Absolutely, and of course, as you said, uh, new deal for 2018 with uh, with the Tech 3 team as well. Uh, good to have consistency, good to have continuation, and you must be looking forward with a uh, year under your belt. Yeah, extremely happy to stay with them, you know. Um, you know, I think it would be, would be not the smartest idea to change teams, you know. Um, if we stay with them, we already have one year under our belts. We know what works, what doesn't. Um, I know the team, they know me. You know, I think we can build on that uh, and, and do a pretty good year next year. Looks like it. Let's just talk you through the grid. We just saw the first three rows as we talked to you through a few moments ago. Marcel Brenner heads row four with Dinas Ecki and wildcard Carol Haneke alongside him. Uh, more along that in just a few moments' time. Hiroki Ono, Jason Uribe and Xavier Carda loose. Uh, then comes uh, Lachlan Epis, Pontus Derland and Cedric Tondre. And at the back of the grid, it's the Superstock 600 champion in Europe for 2017. Philippe Legallo, 59 years of age, that man is as well. 59 years old, he goes and rides a bike. It's older than my dad. <laughs> Well, that's it. So the riders now heading off on their formation, like getting ready to get this uh, race underway. Uh, and as we said, we've got Kara Hanneke wild carding uh, this weekend. Great to have him here. He, of course, competed in the uh, Czech Republic Moto2 race earlier this year. Former Rebel Rookies champion back in uh, 2013, 2014, something like that. So uh, he's got some uh, good experience around this Motorland Aragon circuit. And good to see him uh, here on the bike. So uh, what do we think for the race today? I mean, you've been here all weekend. 43, uh, 43 points behind, I should say. Uh, so it's all to do for Cardus at the moment. Uh, Granada, though, to take the championship here today, he has to win both races uh, in order to do that. And uh, he'll be uh, quitting if anything happens to uh, the likes of Cardus. But likewise, Cardus will be quitting if anything happens to uh, to Granada. So we'll have to wait and see. We've seen it get a bit close and a bit uh, personal over the course of the season. And uh, what's your favourite part of the track, Remy? What, what, what do you like mo more than anything? What's, your, what's the best part for you? Uh, the first set is pretty good. Um, it all starts from the first corner. Basically, yeah, it's a long drive up the hill, so you really have to get real good drive out of the first corner and really focus on the second corner, third corner, and then it's quite a steep climb, so you really want to be carrying good speed and, and getting on the throttle early there. But, uh, yeah, when you get it right, it's just such a good feeling. Certainly seems like it. So we just had the tyre allocation in from Dunlop here today and uh, all riders, of course, on the uh, number two front and the number one rear as the riders get ready to get themselves on the grid. As you can see, Ricky Cardus, the man on pole position, getting ready to uh, take that place at the start of the grid, just riding past his rivals. He's on the outside here. Of course, it is a left-hander for turn number one. This is an anti-clockwise. Uh, configuration of circuit so uh, he'll have the outside line into the first corner but uh, a good start of course will aid his charge down to MCV reps so wait for the red lights to come on look to the left hand side of your screen the red lights will come on any moment now here they are and we get ready to go racing here at Motorland Aragon great start from the middle of the front row and also the second row as well Lucas Solovic absolutely barnstorming his way into the first corner but Eric Granado has the inside line and he manages to take the advantage over Ricky Cardu so Cardu shuffled down into third place as Joe Roberts has got himself up into second on the outside of turn number two so good start there from Eric Granado and Joe Roberts but Cardu's having a bit of more work to do and now 
he's in third position and being chased down by uh, the number 44 of Steven Odedal. Meanwhile, that is the number 46 of Marcel Brenner, who for some reason didn't make the start. Looks like it might have been a mechanical issue for him, but a good clean start from all involved in everything. Yeah, very clean. Uh, you know, in, in two weeks ago in my race, it was uh, there was bikes on everywhere. So very clean race and very clean start from these guys, and especially good start from Joe Roberts. Impressive. Yeah, he's really made some good grounds. He's obviously got recent experience here. Unlike the two uh, boys, one in front of him, one behind him, involved in the championship charge. He, of course, raced here just a couple of weeks ago in the World Championship, so that will definitely help on exactly the same motorcycle on board that uh, Calex machine. And Cardo's really looking to try and... Uh, get back ahead of him. They go hard on the brakes and into turn number 12. This, of course, is where we saw so many overtakes in the MotoGP race a few weeks ago, and he's up the inside just past the wall. Nice little overtake there, and he's now going to be hunting down the leader of the championship. Yeah, Cardus would not want to sit behind uh, Joe Roberts too long and let and Granado get a break. I mean, the first couple of laps are the most important, so he'd be really trying to, you know, just stay on Granado's tail at the moment. Well, 968 metres is the length of this back straight, so just under a kilometre. With The slipstream will be very important, as we can see the man in fourth place, Stephen Odendahl, looking to try and duck his way up the inside, as out from under the bubble goes Ricky Cardus for the lead. But up the inside, into third position, is Odendahl. So the South African, the two teammates for 2018 in the World Championship, now duelling for the final podium position as we get ready to complete lap one out of 16. Over the timing line we go. Here comes Cardus. He's trying to find his way up the inside, inside into the 90 degree left hander. Nice clean overtake, but is Granada going to get the exit? Is he going to have the Ooh. traction around the outside? He goes through the right hander of turn two. And he's back into the lead. Nice clean switchback move. Yeah, yeah, just cut his nose off. Very aggressive. Very nice. We can see somebody being trailed away. That looks like somebody's gone down in the background. And that must have been on the opening lap. We'll keep you updated if we get an update on that one. But uh, nonetheless, Granado going a bit wide. Just confirmation from Race Direction as well about no jump start, so that's good to see. But uh, Granado's really having to uh, defend quite hard in these opening stages from Cardus. And of course, the more these two battle, it's going to allow the likes of Roberts and Odendahl from behind. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think they will play a bit more smart and try and get a break so they don't have to deal with that, but uh, we'll see. Um, maybe they can stay there and, and hang on to that draft. But I was having a look, and Ricky's bike looks very quick in a straight line. Uh, he pulled in a lot of... Uh, a lot of bike lanes down that back straight, so it'll be interesting to see. Indeed we will. Over the brow of the hill we go, heading into the left-hander of turn number 12, up the inside for the lead of the race goes Ricky Cardus. So 25 points versus 20 in this race. It's going to be crucial for the title. Of course, Granado needs to take both race victories today in the Muto 2 European Championship, and if he finishes second, it won't be enough. But meanwhile, the man behind him, Joe Roberts, closing up on the brakes as we go into the left-hander of turn number 15 and onto that back straight. You know, very good guy. Um, impressive qualifying in uh, Saxon Ring. Out qualified me in the wet, but uh, yeah, unlucky in the race in, in Saxon Ring for him. Uh, got a little bit wide in the dirty stuff and lost the front, but you know, very impressive first wild card. And uh, yeah, he's strong, so look out for him in the near future. Yeah, we'll have to see if we'll have him at the World Championship for next year. Looks like it's going to be a case in terms of the World Championship of uh, too many seats and uh, or too many riders and not enough seats. Oh, it's it's always the case. End of every year, you know, everyone's you know <laughs> scrambling for seats like musical chairs. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's Odin Dahl. He's the man who's confirmed in the World Championship for 2018. He's got Granado behind and also Garzo. Joe Roberts has just dropped back a little bit at the moment. He's now down in fifth place. Is the number 27 on board the AGR machine. Meanwhile, the top three not necessarily putting a bit of daylight but a, a slight gap appearing actually between the top four and also Roberts. So Roberts looks like he's backing up Perilari and uh, Tolovic at the moment. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with regards to this. 12 laps remaining and tyre wear on these bikes. What's tyre wear like at this circuit? I think they have different tyres uh, to, the, to the World Championship tyres. Uh, we get very hard tyres. Um, I'm pretty sure they're using, what are they using? Uh, Dunlop twos and ones. Twos and ones, yeah. We don't get the one. Uh, the two we get, but the one rear uh, is quite soft. It's it's a very good uh, very good tyre. Um, we only get the three, but basically with the three we get about two laps and, and really it's difficult to go fast again. But it kind of drops, stays constant, 
good grip and then drops again. Look at this gaggle of riders heading into the first corner. Eight uh, competitors competing for the lead. This is absolutely brilliant stuff. We haven't seen a big group like this in the Moto2 European Championship all season. Normally it splits up into two or three. We see that in the World Championship as well. The riders, they, they all split up into smaller groups. Yeah, in the World Championship, you usually have the first three or four. Then it, and then you get your next group if you're like fourth to, to about seventh and then your next group seventh to about 12th, 13th and then and then the last group for the points. Um, but yeah, impressive big uh, first group here. So I've never really seen this in Moto2. It's kind of like a Moto3 race at the moment. But it'll be definitely interesting. But I feel like Garza is kind of like the last one and then, oh, well, Joe Roberts is there. But I feel like the first three or four are going to break uh, any minute now. In terms of the lap times, Garzo and uh, Roberts were separated by just two thousandths of a second over yeah. the line last time, so they're lapping very consistently. And it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Here comes Odendahl, meanwhile, into uh, second position. He's looking like he was trying to find a way ahead of uh, Cardus there into turn 12. Couldn't quite manage it at the moment. 11 laps to go, so still plenty of time. But this is the thing we've noticed with this NTS machine uh, this year. It struggles on its tyres in the latter half of the race. It's really quick in the opening stages and even the mid stages, but just the latter half, it seems to really shred its tyres up. Yeah, uh, that could mean just it's really working the tyres real hard. That's very good to see from the Frenchman. Of course, he's been racing World Endurance over the course of the 2017 season. It's good to see him back on the motorcycle. And here comes Cardus once again as we go over the brow of the hill into turn number 12. This is a favourite passing spot, but it's, it's hard on the front end, that corner. Very, especially because it's downhill. And also at the apex of that corner, you have a real big bump and there's no way to avoid it. So you really do not want to be going over that with too much brakes. Um, Otherwise, you know, <laughs> it can be a bit dangerous. But, you know, good passing spot because you can really come up and get behind them out of that long left uh, before that back straight and, um, you know, get a real good slipstream and, and just be there. You don't really have to. The need really is it's not, they don't need Odendahl to come in and spoil the party, but Odendahl wants to come and spoil the party because he wants the best result possible. Well, he's really got nothing to lose, does he? He's not fighting for the championship, so I'm pretty sure he'll be going for the win as well, you know. Props Terek uh, uh, Garza. Um, Garza's doing a pretty good job right now. Uh, he looks pretty strong and he's holding on to fourth pretty well. I think he's going to be quite strong at the end of the race, so keep an eye on the blue bike. And you've shared a bio garage with him as well. What's, uh, what's he like as a, as a person, as a rider? You've, you've very nice guy, you know, very good guy. Um, impressive qualifying in uh, Saxon Ring, out-qualified me in the wet, but uh, yeah, unlucky in the race in, in Saxon Ring for him. Uh, got a little bit wide in the dirty stuff and lost the front, but you know, very impressive first wild card and uh, yeah, he's strong, so look out for him in the near future. Yeah, we'll have to see if we'll also have him at the World Championship for next year. Looks like it's going to be a case in terms of the World Championship of uh, too many seats and uh, too many riders and not enough seats. Oh, it's, it's always the case. End of every year, you know, everyone's you know scrambling for seats like musical chairs. You can have anything made or um, anything machined or you know have the bike as I want. So it's basically like a factory bike with a factory team. So that's real good um, being able to have the opportunity for that. Here's a replay of uh, Garzo going too wide. He was just on the brakes and, yep, ran it out yeah. a bit too hot into there. And he's lost a few positions. That's the problem when you've got a big group like this, right? You know, you can go from, what was he, third? Now is he sixth? Three places just like that. So easy corner to run wide as well, you know. Um, you go in there with lean angle, take the brakes, go a bit hot and you, you've got nowhere to go except stand it up. Bit of a gap now appearing as well. Yeah. I'm just wondering where's Renardo because he was in third position and now Roberts has gone into P3. So it looks like Renardo has just dropped back. Yeah, he's yeah. into fourth place. We can see there just on that long shot. Meanwhile, here comes Cardus up the inside into that final corner. Lace on the brakes. You can see the front ends chattering away. That's beautifully done there from uh, Ricky Cardus. It's a difficult corner that because it gets tighter on the exit. Yeah, you really have to kind of slide it, square it up and then stand the bike up. I'm pretty sure Dendel's going to go for the pass here. Oh, no, no. Tucks him behind. Yeah, he's got a very unique riding style. Meanwhile, here comes Roberts back up the inside for P3. Ognardo shuffles him out wide into that 90 degree left-hander. So Roberts now onto the podium. This is exactly what, not what uh, Granado wants at the moment. Uh, someone else chopping him up and letting the front group get away. This is, uh, oh, up the inside. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Can he stop it? <laughs> He don't want to do a Garzo. No, he manages to make the apex through there nicely. And uh, Garzo again running wide through that yeah. corner. Yeah, yeah. So it's like he's having a couple of issues there. Indeed. We'll have to uh, keep an 
Kai. Look, look at this, though. That, that gap that's appeared between the top two of Cardus and Odendahl now. Look at the daylight they've got as Odendahl takes a big look over his shoulder, and that allows Cardus to go through. But uh, there's a good half a second or so between these uh, these guys. I've had eight yeah. tenths of a second or so as I look at the timing screen. But Cardus now it's tries to put the hammer down, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Granado, you'll see his lap times drop uh, considerably now. I think he'll be pushing pretty hard to catch that group. Indeed, over the brow of the hill we go. Odendahl looking to try and find that way up the inside. He's got a really unique riding style, as that's uh, as the South African as well. He's a shoulder in sort of guy. If you yeah, remember. I remember, when was it, last year? Yeah, last year, at the beginning of the year, when I used to race with him, I was just thinking, so strange. But, you know, it works, and uh, he's definitely a tough competitor. He's, he certainly is making it work now. Granado's come back into the foray. Good uh, middle sector from the uh, Brazilian has really helped him close up yeah. onto the back of Odendahl. That little bit of slipstream will help him as well, you know, every tiny bit counts, so that's really an advantage for for Granado right now. Indeed, hard on the brakes we go, you can see Granado's back yep. end coming out there. I love backing these bikes, and this looks like so much fun. Yeah, um, it's, it's it can be an advantage as well, you know, you get the bike home before the corner and, and really square up corners. Here he comes. Here comes Ronaldo on the outside. So Carlos is going to go from uh, the lead of the race into third place in the space of a corner. Odendahl into the lead. 54-7, I think, from Granado. So very good. That's the fastest lap of the race we've seen so far. Yeah. So he's really putting the hammer down. And this is a good thing that we've seen with Granado over the course of the season. He's good at managing his tyres. Yeah, um, he's always strong at all and, and, uh, and then fight it out. But, you know, it's personal, I guess, out there. So we'll see. He's going to be in contention for his uh, first ever victory is Stephen Odendahl, but Cardus and Garzo, uh, sorry, Garzo from behind, I should say, uh, Granado from behind, trying to find the way through. Here's their replay of that incident again. So let's see, Cardus holding the outside like oh, it was close. Was there a bit of a touch? It was a little bit of a touch, yeah. Just, that was exactly a, a similar incident to what we saw with uh, Marquez and Pedroza a few years yes. ago, do you remember? Yes, and he broke the... Uh was it the rear wheel sensor and lost traction control? Yeah, and then a uh, massive high side, Very wasn't it? Very big high side. Huge crash. So three laps now remaining, well, nearly two and a half, actually. And uh, Odendahl with the advantage at the moment. It's crunch time, though, in terms of the championship. At the moment, it's not going to be enough for Granado to take the title here this weekend. He's going to have to push very hard and dispose of Cardus and then uh, the reigning European champion, Odendahl, at the moment. So a good amount of pedigree and a very difficult uphill struggle. Yeah, I think he's going to have a hard time. Uh, one is that he's got Ricky between first and second, so he's got to get past Ricky without Ricky trying to make a move um, back on him. And then getting past Odendal, so he's got, yeah, a pretty big challenge. Uh, all right, they come down to this corner. <laughs> he's the, a bit of a duck and a look at that wobble on the front end yeah. from Granado. Pushing it a bit hot there. <laughs> you mentioned about that bump on the corner entry. Yeah, it kind of looked like he ran out of stroke on his <laughs> suspension, to be honest, and uh, got all the wobbles up on the front. But he seems to have saved it, and uh, he's, he's there, he's there. And you'll have a good slipstream going on to this back straight. Well, we saw, of course, in Moto3 uh, last time out in the World Championship with... Uh, uh, the slipstream really coming into effect on the last lap. It's certainly paying dividends in terms of Moto2. Here comes uh, Cardus, dunks out from under the bubble. It's all going on further behind as well, as you saw in that long shot, as uh, Garzo, Roberts, Tolovic, and uh, Tulovic, sorry, and Eki are all battling for the top four at the moment. Meanwhile, over the timeline we go, two laps now remaining. This is where it's going to count, though. You can see their team willing Odendahl on. Still that group of three at the moment. They want that first victory. And you know that uh, Japanese run outfit, it will be a uh, uh, euphoric feeling for them. Yes. Um, you know, it would be good to see them win a race. Um, you know, it's good to see up-and-coming manufacturers. Uh, it gives a bit, a bit more... A bit more um, makes the class a bit more diverse, you know? Uh, you know, just have Calyx, 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 and... Uh, and well, now you've got Suter and, and, and Speed Up, are, you know, they're pretty impressive as well. So it'll be good next year, and especially for 2019 with the Triumph, I'm sure there'll be a lot more manufacturers coming in, and uh, it'll be good to see. Yeah, we're so excited to see Triumph. Uh, there is uh, a few rumours going around the panel that we're going to have a, a Triumph engine bike in Moto2 next year. Yeah, I've, I've heard that rumour. Maybe CV Triumph, so it'll be good, a good development class. We'll have to uh, keep you updated on that news as it develops. We might uh, have a clearer idea of the picture in the final round in uh, Valencia. Meanwhile, you can see the lap time comparison there. Odendahl just a fraction slower than Cardus, and this is Cardus's favourite passing spot. He's thinking about it, but just not close enough, perhaps just doing a dummy run. 
Yeah, could be sizing him up. Uh, you know, or maybe he just... Odendo looks pretty strong on the brakes, to be honest. Um, it looks like Ricky's having a hard time trying to pass him, so... It'll be good to see him in the last lap and see if he can dive bomb him somewhere, but, you know, you don't want to overshoot in anywhere because you'd be back to third position. You certainly don't. Down the back straight we come for the penultimate time of asking here at Motorland Aragon. Seems like it goes on forever on that straight, doesn't it? It's a very long straight and downhill, so very, very fast straight, and you arrive to that last corner, and you, you do, it's very easy to overshoot, and if you overshoot... <laughs> You're, You're in, in trouble. The <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. You're heading straight into the uh, the centre of Alcaneers. Last <laughs> lap then of the Moto2 European Championship. At the moment, Odendahl leads the way. Cardus from behind, trying to take the advantage. He's fighting for his chance in the championship. And the man in third place, he leads the title. He needs to take the win in order to keep himself in with a chance of winning the championship here today. If not, it will go down to the final race in Valencia. Just one race for those guys at the finale. And it's real crunch time now into the left-hander of turn number five we go a very exciting part of the lap it's hard on the front end it's into the left then it's into the right-hander I'm sure Granado is counting on Ricky trying to make a pass and, and going a little bit wide and maybe taking advantage of that so playing the long game oh but he's got to be making a move soon I know that right up until three corners before the end of the lap but it is going to surely unless there's a mistake at the final corner Ooh. go the way of Ricky Cardus out of turn number 17 we go here in the Moto2 European Championship it's Cardus's victory Granado takes second place that's uh, right Odendahl takes second place Granado holds on to third place this battle for fourth place still goes on it's Roberts from Eki in the last lap brilliant stuff from Dimas Eki he really made some good inroads there Perilari into uh, seventh place, Fellini into eighth, and then Sanchez into ninth. So good racing all round in the Moto2 Ooh. European Championship. Tal over the timing line we go. Lucas Talovic is... He's in tenth place yeah. as he came over the timing line. So he really lost out yeah, on that yeah. last lap. Yeah, yeah, he's made a mistake or something. Unfortunate there for the uh, the German rider, but nonetheless, Ricky Cardus did exactly what he needs to do to keep himself in with that championship charge. And the uh, championship at the moment is going to be very, very interesting between uh, Granado and uh, Cardus because, of course, nine more points on the board for Ricky Cardus in that race. A brilliant race victory and just timed that so well. Very, very intelligent racing. Um, you know, he had... He knew he had Eric behind him, and he's waited till the last lap to get past uh, to get past Stephen. And uh, you know he's put Stephen between him and and, and uh, Granado, and it's really paid off for him. So very intelligent racing from uh, from Ricky, and you know, congrats to him. Beautiful stuff. Last five or six laps, or so hasn't really made the inroads. As Roberts out well wide, that's going to allow Garza a bit of a move, surely, to get a better exit. Indeed, it does, and it also allows Tulovic into the frame. Yeah. I'd like to see what Gaza can do now. Maybe he can close up the gap or not. Um, be good to see. I'll have to wait and see uh, what happens. The top three, this is uh, looking very good for uh, for these guys at the moment. Still Odendahl leading the way, but uh, Hector Garza, really very, very impressive. Over the brow of the hill we go. I have to say, I've, the only experience I've had of this circuit is on the MotoGP video game, right? Even that circuit <laughs> on the cockpit camera, even that corner, it looks so scary because you can't see anything. Yeah. Uh, well, you kind of come over a brow and you're kind of looking for the 100-meter the mark and, and you kind of just look for, for that breaking point. But, yeah, you, you don't see the apex when you start breaking and you start to slide out outwards towards the outside of the track. So it's a tricky corner when you get it right. Oh, feels good. I can well imagine. Garzo now, though, as you said there, uh, Remy, he's really putting some daylight yep. in between himself and, uh, and uh, Roberts at the moment. So seven laps to go. This isn't over. No, no. This is when you kind of see the, the riders put their, their fastest lap times down. When a group's broken away, you're at the front of the next group. You really... Tr yeah, that was a cheeky <laughs> move from Cardiff, yeah. wasn't it? It's, uh, you lose a lot of drive going onto the back, that back straight when you, uh, when you try and make a move like that, you know? So, so yeah, a little gap between Odendal and them now. Uh, yeah, he's managed to managed to uh, make a bit more of uh, an advantage. Odendahl's uh, really pushing uh, the hammer down now, and he wants that first victory. That team would love to have a victory under their belt, wouldn't they, before they go into the World Championship? Yeah, that would be a real confidence booster for next year. I was actually talking to um, to the bosses yesterday, and they said they were actually going to try something today, and they didn't know if it was going to work, and I didn't hear anything after warm-up, but it looks like in the race it's definitely working. Well, this is the time when we would expect uh, Odendahl's uh, champion, uh, his uh, sort of, 
paces, we should say, to sort of drop off, because this is what we've seen over the course of the season. But he's hanging on in there, and as you just saw in the graphic a few moments ago, fastest lap of the entire race yeah. last time around. So no problems at all with that NTS chassis and its tyre wear at this stage. No, no, and, uh, you know, it's a, he's only got six laps to go. So if he can just hang on in that group, I'm sure he can uh, can battle it out for the last, uh, last couple of laps. But I just saw him sliding there. He looks like he may be losing a little bit of rear grip. I just saw him coming out of... Uh, uh, the fast left, uh, yeah, the fast left going a bit sideways. So, well, we saw that, of course, with uh, Cardus in Barcelona, uh, the race which you won last year, yeah. of course, didn't you? And uh, he uh, managed going through turn three. He, everyone else was going flat out, spinning up the rear tire. He was, you know, hanging off a bit and just uh, rolling off the throttle to try and save that tire. And at the end of the race, it paid dividends. Yeah, um, last year, oh, this year actually in, in Montmelo, uh, that's kind of really where I learned to. Shut off the throttle to go faster. It's kind of a strange thing, but you start to spin so much, you shut off, the tire gets grip again, and you go forward. So it's a strange, strange way to ride, but you know, it's uh, you have to adapt all the time to the conditions. Certainly do. Over the timing line we go. Here comes Cardi. Surely he's going to think about a move into the first corner. They go past our commentary position. And as we head into the 90 degree left, Opendahl still manages to have an advantage. He's getting good drive and good traction. And now Granado is coming back into play. As we said, Granado, he needs two victories today in order to take the title here this weekend. If he doesn't take the victory in this first race, it will go down to the wire in Valencia, which will make it very interesting for us. But uh, I'm sure he'll be biting his fingernails down to the bone. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Uh, wait for the last couple of laps. I'm sure he's going he's gonna to try something, and I'm, I'm sure he's going to uh, push and put everything on the line today. So we'll see. We will. A couple of retirements in this race. Uh, Cedric Tonsley, who we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, uh, was coming into pit lane on the Ariane chassis. He uh, has unfortunately retired uh, with an ongoing mechanical issue. And likewise, Marcel Brenner, who started the race from pit lane, uh, likewise has uh, retired. He retired uh, quite a few laps ago now, so some problems and uh, some ground to make up for those guys. Meanwhile, the battle for uh, fourth position in this race, Joe Roberts' advantage to the American at the moment. He's managed to get ahead of Hector Garzo, and now we're seeing what we normally see in Moto2, but this is what we have at the, the start of the mid-stages in the race, is, uh, is the, the smaller groups. Yeah, as you can see, that, that big first group has broken up. Uh, you know, the first three have really put the hammer down, and uh, this is kind of like where it's make it or break it. Can you keep up or not? So, yeah, I mean, these guys are still doing pretty close lap times to the front leaders. Um, I just think them battling and, and getting caught up with each other has, has lost them some valuable time. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of where you see everything stretch out of it. It's indeed over the... Uh or under the hill, we, or I should say, on the back straight we are, rather, into the uh, penultimate corner and then the final turn. It's two corners, that one, turn 16, yeah. and then this left hand of the tight kink of turn 17. And it's a very deceiving turn, as we alluded to earlier on, and Odendahl getting over the curbs, and that's uh, bike becoming a bucking bronco before the uh, last few laps, and uh, they're just Got getting up right a bit up. of traffic of Ooh. Philippe Le Gallo. Is that going to hinder their progress? Is it going to slow Odendahl? He realises this Philippe Le Gallo get through at turn number two fortunately nothing uh, untoward happened there yeah um it's so easy for to get caught up with a with a lap rider so you know the lap riders really need to be looking for those blue flags and and, and hopping up out of the way because you know it's not only uh, dangerous but it can ruin someone's race 160 154.608 uh, oh. for odendahl Fast. fastest lap of the race that we've seen so far in terms of uh, Qualifying as well, they're a bit off the uh, pace that we had yesterday, but of course different uh, track conditions. A lot hotter today than we had yesterday as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the second race is going to be a very greasy race. I I'm sure you'll see tyre wear a lot, a lot more in the second race. Uh, you know, we're still kind of mourning at the moment, so... Yeah, I think uh, I think we might see, might see some different results in the second race. Who can manage the heat better, so... So we will over the uh, brow of the hill we go. Granado ducking out from under the bubble. He's trying to find his way up the inside of his title rival, Ricky Cardus. Cardus not giving an inch, though, and manages Ooh. to hold on to that position. They were close. Was there a bit of a touch there? Yes, yes, a bit of a dirty look as well. <laughs> <laughs> Cardus is thinking, what on earth are you playing at? These two have come to blows before. Let's not forget Esther Real on the final lap of race two. Let's hope we don't have a similar feat repeating itself. It's, uh, oh, I'm sure these last three laps are going to be very interesting. <laughs> it's but all playing into the hands of Odendahl. Though. Yeah, as you can see, he's pulling away, and these two fighting is, is not helping each other. So I think they really need to be catching up to Odendahl and, and, uh, and then fight it out. But, you know, it's personal, I guess, out there. So we'll see.
He's going to be in contention for his uh, first ever victory is Stephen Odendahl, but Cardus and Garzo, uh, sorry, Garzo from behind, I should say, uh, Granado from behind, trying to find the way through. Here's the replay of that incident again. So let's see, Cardus holding the outside line. Oh, it was close. Was there a bit of a touch? It was a little bit of a touch, yeah. Just, that uh, was exactly a, a, a similar incident to what we saw with uh, Marquez and Pedroza a few years. It is going to surely, unless there's a mistake at the final corner, Ooh. go the way of Ricky Cardus. Out of turn number 17 we go here in the Moto2 European Championship. It's Cardus's victory. Granado takes second place. That's right, Odendahl takes second place. Granado holds on to third place. This battle for fourth place still goes on. It's Roberts from Ecuador. This afternoon, he could well be leading the championship heading into the final round. Yeah. That would be so. The championship will go to Valencia. Certainly will do. That's uh, one thing we know for certain now. And uh, brilliant racing there, Ricky Cardus. What a what a way to do it. As you can see there, 30 minutes and uh, 46 seconds, average speed of 158.3 kilometers an hour on board that team Stylerbike Calix. Uh, bear in mind, he missed the first round, of course, in Albacete as well. Just makes it ever more impressive. There's Stephen Odendahl, the South African, 24 years of age he is. Which, uh, it's amazing, really, he's still only 24 years of age because he's been in the in motorcycle racing in terms of the world and European championships for such a long time. Yes, he did a, a year in, in, in the world championship. 2013, yeah, yeah, with uh, with AGR, actually, yes. back in the day, and then uh, came back to uh, the European championship and has uh, really earned his keep whilst he's been here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's been a strong runner ever since, so... Definitely deserves his ride next year in, in the World Championship. Manages to uh, hold on to that uh, brilliant uh, title once more. There we go. Congratulations all round for Ricky Cardus from the man we were just referring to, Stephen Odendahl. And uh, as we said, exactly what he needed to do to keep himself in with the chance of winning that championship. And the uh, Starter Bike outfit, very pleased uh, with that result. Here are the final classification results then. So Ricky Cardus takes the victory here at Motorland Aragon in race number one of the Moto2 European Championship from Odendahl and Granado. Joe Roberts, a brilliant fourth place, just a couple of tenths ahead of the Indonesian rider Dimas Eki. Hector Garzo in sixth, Corentin Polari seventh, Federico Fellini, great result for him. He'll be in the World Championship next year also, finishing in eighth place with uh, David Sanchis in ninth place, the first suitor home. Then it's Lucas Tulovic, Hiroki Ono in 11th place, Jason Uribe in 12th, Xavier Acarda loose in 13th. Caro Hanneke, the wild card. Quiet race for him. Go down to Dakota. He's in part Ferme with the race winner, Ricky Cardus. Ricky, uh, nine points now. It's getting closer and closer. But it seemed like a good start of the race and a big group. And then you guys finally broke it down to three. But uh, another good win. You must be happy with that. Yeah, I'm very happy because... It's not easy to to finish in the championship the first because 20 points in in three races is very difficult because Granado is in the good level now and for him is not easy but it's not too much difficult to first uh, to finish second and three and me I need to to play a little bit in the race because for me my goal is Granado stay rear than me and I try to to win all the race and calm and not nervous because a small mistake is a uh, for me I'm lost the the championship now in Spanish please sí para mí no es fácil recortar 20 puntos en un en tres carreras eh, Granado está en un estado de forma muy muy fuerte y para él no es fácil pero pero no es muy difícil ¿no? acabar en el, en el podium, entonces tenemos que, que intentar ganarlo todo y, y, que, y que él no se enganche detrás mío. Y, y bueno, ahora la siguiente carrera tengo que salir y, y darlo todo, escaparme y ya está. Gracias, Ricky. Well, he thinks the championship is uh, all but over now, does uh, Ricky Cardus. Here's some highlights, though, of the race. Brilliant stuff here in the uh, Moto2 European Championship. Away from the lights, it was Granado who managed to get the advantage into turn number one. Fantastic start from him. There was Marcel Brenner. He started that race from pit lane. Unfortunately, retired a few laps in. Meanwhile, there was a great battle as Joe Roberts, he got himself up into second position by turn number two, but was then hassled in the uh, latter few laps by uh, Ricky Cardus who got ahead and then it was Stephen Odendahl's turn to, to make a charge. He got up into third position but not before Roberts fought back. Meanwhile the lead changed as Cardus hit the front 
once again. But then the next corner saw Granado once again taking that lead back. Nicely done between those two. It became a continuing and recurring theme for the next couple of laps afterwards as Cardu's once again got himself into uh, 12, into uh, turn number 12, into the lead of the race. Then comes uh, Cardu's once again into second place as Granado hits the front once more. Then Granado got shuffled back in the pack after running a little bit wide. Speaking of running wide, likewise did Hector Garzo. He lost three positions in the space of 100 metres or so. Running wide at turn number six. Over the timing line we went as Odendahl led the way. He hit the front for the first time on board the NTS chassis coming from Granado and then Cardu. Some brilliant stuff from those guys. Then it was a cheeky move up the inside onto the back straight from Cardu. But a couple of laps later, Granado gave it as good as he got. Around the outside, there was a bit of a touch between both of those riders. No love lost between the Spaniard and the Brazilian. Over the timing line, we went with two laps remaining. It looked like it would be Odendahl's race to lose, and so it turned out to be the final lap. A beautifully executed move from the man trying to hold on to the title. Ricky Cardus coming over the timeline to take victory here in the FIM TV Repsol in Moto2. Exactly what he needed to do to hold on to that charge in the championship. Joe Roberts, a brilliant fourth place. With Dima Seki, the Indonesian rider, coming home in fifth position. Great stuff from the 29-year-old. A great race on board that Calix. Working very well indeed. And now we get ready for the podium as uh, Eric Granado takes third place. Stephen Odendahl for the NTS team in second position and then the man on the top step 29 year old Ricky Cardus for Team Style Bike and the man you can see on the right hand side is Lachlan Epis the Australian Superstock winner of that race so uh, nicely done from Lachlan trophy being presented to the teams great team uh, Team Style Bike they were uh, out at dinner at the same restaurant as us last night it looked like they were having a, a pretty good time of it as well <laughs> There's Lachlan Epis presented with his trophy, as we said, former Super Sport rider and Australian National Super Sport uh, Moto3 champion, I should say, as well. Then comes uh, Eric Granado. He's presented with his trophy. He will be after the uh, the handshakes are all done. He doesn't look too displeased there with third place. Well, I mean, he's still in the championship now. Um, you know, he did his best, and, and you know, I think he knows that Ricky played a very smart race. So. I'm sure he'll be learning from that, and uh, race two, I think, should be a bit different, especially with the, the hotter conditions this afternoon, and uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be good to see. Another podium for the NTS team and Steven Odendahl, adding to their many of the trophy cabinet, but the man on the top step, as you can see, delighted with that, Ricky Cardus. Beautiful trophy there as well, a map of the Aragon circuit. Fantastic stuff here in the FIM TV Repsol. He's presented with a, a check for some petrol as well. Very nicely done. So uh, some free fuel in his uh, car or motorcycle, whatever he chooses. I know he likes a bit of dirt track because of his brother Ferran, so <laughs> probably going the dirt bike.